Hi everyone, my name is William and today I will share my ideas entitled Adaptive Variable Wingtip. But before I start explaining about this project, I want to give a little bit more of myself. So my full name is William Wijaja, my, and as you can guess from my name, my nationality is Indonesian and my major is Aerospace Engineering. And I, I want to give a little bit like fun facts or disclaimer. The first thing is that I'm not good at math. Like, my uh, senior high school math, math school is 75, the average is 75, whereas most of my friends got above 80, and some of them got even 90. So math is not really my strongest suit. And then the second thing is that I was told by my teacher that I will never win anything, and I will talk about that later after I explain my project. And so, with that being said, let's jump into why I make this project. Well, the first thing is that everything will be flying in the future because flying is much quicker, safer, and more efficient. And if we compare between air and ground transport, in ground transport, you need to worry about two things. The first one is aerodynamic resistance, and then the second one is the rolling resistance. And I think rolling resistance is pretty much inevitable because the thing is uh, the wheels needs uh, friction in order to have grip. So friction is just basically another energy loss because we could not possibly transfer 100% grip towards the uh, to minimize the energy loss there. Whereas in air transport, you only need to worry a single thing and that is aerodynamic resistance. And so the second point is that fossil fuel is not renewable. We all we all know that it's limited, but the the what makes matter worse is that refining. Uh, fossil fuel in order to get a higher quality such as uh, kerosene and other types of petroleum gases it is energy intensive and also alternative energy is not ready yet for air transport applications such as electricity even though electric aircraft has been introduced and uh, basically developed over the past decade they still have one big problem and that one big problem is energy density now energy density is basically the amount of energy that can be stored within a system and if you take a comparison between kerosene which is commonly used as jet fuel and lithium battery the kerosene could hold 40 times more higher energy compared to the lithium so that's just to show uh, how big the differences are and what makes matter worse is that uh, we burn kerosene away over time meaning that the aircraft will be lighter and lighter uh, when it's on being used, whereas in electric aircraft, battery does not lose its mass uh, once it's being used or once it's depleted, meaning that the aircraft will essentially carry a dead weight uh, when it will have the same weight when it's taking off and when, it, when it's landing. That's why electric aircraft will uh, be limited to low range uh, and low capacity. And the, the third point is that the increasing growth of passengers will eventually deplete the oil reserves around the world. Now, OPEC has predicted that by the year of 2110, we will use up to 85% of our global oil reserves. Now, this is still projected, so it could mean it's uh, much longer than 2110, but it could also mean it's shorter. And it's best not to gamble with this, since uh, our right now our economy still mainly depends on fossil fuel to deliver the logistics around the world. And that leads into the fourth point, which is the increasing uh, by increasing aircraft performance, it will help to slow down the depletion of oil reserves. Now, this is not a solution of what, uh, to, for changing like why are we still using fossil fuel, but it will act like a buffer in such a way that uh, our researchers and scientists could figure out uh, new ways to store those energy in a more dense way or even find new and alternative energy source that has similar uh, energy density compared to kerosene. And so to increase the aircraft performance, I create uh, I differentiate into four different parts. The first one is safety, second is efficiency, and then emissions, and the last one is comfort. Now why I do differentiate um, uh, efficiency and emissions uh, differently? The thing is an engine could be efficient, but it produces high emissions. Now the example of this is the older generations of rocket engines, where they use toxic propellants to gain high thrust. Now having a very high efficient engine but produce a dangerous side products is basically just not a worthy trade-off because even though it's much more efficient we're also polluting our own environment so that's not worth it and after knowing why let's jump into how this project works so in the picture shown 
you will see that the aircraft wings is actually has a two different pressure regions. Remember that this is a simplified terms. Uh, so there's a low pressure and a high pressure region. Now, if we move into the end of the wings or the wingtips, the high pressure will eventually wants to move to low, right, in order to achieve equilibrium. But since uh, the separation plate gets thinner and thinner, it will move, it will leak towards the from high to low in a circular form and thus creating wing tip vortex. Now wing tip vortex is an induced drag, meaning that it will affect the overall efficiency of the aircraft and NASA in, uh, has stated that the efficiency loss can be from 7.5% to 10% and so scientists installed uh, this device named winglets. Now the purpose of winglets is to reduce the pre those pressure gradients in order to minimize the vortex generated. Now winglets come in different forms, in different shapes, however they all have one single disadvantage and that is they are only efficient in certain positions, meaning that let's say in the winglets in when the aircraft is taking off has a different level of efficiency when it's cruising or when it's landing. So my hypothesis to that is that, well, the changes of wingtips angle and shape might reduce the amount of vortex generated, which is indicated uh, by increase in lift to drag ratio or COP. And moving forward, to discuss about the methodology, I'm using two different methodologies. The first one is computational, and then the second one is experimental. Now, uh, why I use computational is that computational is a time saver. Uh, I'm able to run multiple iterations without having to fabricate each uh, design, each uh, changes over time. So it's also saved me a lot of resources and funding as well. But in order to validate the computational data, we need the result from experimental so that it could, uh, we could see the correlation between the simulation and real life. Are there any correlations? Are there any anomalies? Do they have the same trend lines? If they have the same trend lines, then we could safely say that it is validated. And then moving forward, talking about variables, uh, I established four types of variables in this experiment. I will explain the last one. Uh, so the independent variables are wingtip angle, angle of attack, and airspeed. Whereas the dependent variables is lift to drag uh, coefficient value, or also called COP or coefficient of performance. And the last one, we, uh, and the next one, the control variables are temperature, humidity, model scale, and airfoil profile. Now, since I'm using the small scale wind tunnel at government uh, research facility named BBTA3 BBBT, uh, it wasn't easy to talk to them, uh, especially asking for their permissions uh, for me to use their equipment. But luckily, I was helped by Indonesian Institute of Sciences. Uh, sciences so that I could use their, I could be granted their permissions. And this wind tunnel itself is an open return wind tunnel, meaning that there are variables that I could not control nor I can detect. And those variables are the Reynolds number. Basically, it's just a number to, to determine whether the flow is laminar or turbulent, as it will affect the lift to drag coefficient. And the second one is the gas type. Now, in different altitude, in a different atmospheric altitude, it will have different gas percentage. That's why uh, in an open return wind tunnel, we could, simul we could not simulate that. We could not mimic the similar conditions because an open cycle meaning that the air will, be, will not be reused, it will blown away. And the gas type correlates to the last uncontrollable variables, which is skin roughness or basically the, how smooth a uh, surface is and as it will affect the drag value. Now, the skin roughness itself is mainly cost because I'm using a 3D printed model for the experimental one. So, a model like this one is 3D printed from ABS uh, polymer. It will have some smooth uh, skin roughness, different skin roughness compared to the alloy used to cover the aircraft wings. And so, moving forward, uh, I created this simple uh, research flow chart so that the research flow chart purpose is to help me to see if there's something that I need to fix, something that uh, I need to reiterate, something that can ensure I am already did this so I can progress forward safely. It's basically just like the guidelines. And what you're seeing now is actually the prototype Mark 1. So the wingtip type is record taken from the Boeing 787 Dreamliner and Boeing 777 and the airfoil profile which is this 
airfoil profile is actually taken from the Boeing 737 and is one of the most common commercial aircraft available at the market. And progressing forward, uh, these are the research data in a simplified version. So right from the start you could see that yes there are differences in values uh, between this experimental and this computational. However, if you take a closer look, we will notice that the trend lines are similar, if not identical at some point. And after discussing with the aerodynamics experts and professors at BBTA3, uh, we determined that, yes, the experimental values is able to validate the computational uh, values because they have a similar trend lines. And in some cases, the coefficient is within the, it's almost identical. It's between the error margin, margin of error. And so, after knowing that, okay, the trend lines are the same, uh, I got the opportunity to test on a much more advanced uh, aerodynamic program at the Indonesian Institute, uh, Indonesian Research Facility, uh, to test in a higher speed, which is 250 meter per second, uh, to see to see what are the correlations, what might the trend lines be, uh, when we are experiencing those high speed, because wind tunnel could not replicate that, the maximum speed of wind tunnel that I use is 25 meter per second, so it's 10 times more faster compared to the, uh, the wind tunnel that I use. And surprisingly, the trend lines are similar uh, to towards the low, low speed results. And so in year 2019, I used the original data to create the prototype Mark 3. Now prototype Mark 3 uh, has the same weight as prototype Mark 1. This is prototype Mark 1 but it has an increase in terms of efficiency. Uh, it has an increase up to 7% uh, whilst maintaining the same weight. So there is no weight reduction. And it's actually inspired from Armadillo. As you can see, the folding mechanism is actually based from their skin. And let's say that this program, uh, this project wants to be integrated into real life. To, into existing platform without having to build a new aircraft to adapt it because that would be time consuming and not worth it. So I created this basic diagram to show how the system might work. So basically there are two additional sensors, uh, two redundancies for them to continuously checking on each other, working on each other, seeing if so that if one of the sensors fail, it will not compromise the safety of the flying itself. And those uh, I name it the safety feedback loop. And so what can we learn from this project? Well, the first thing is that the data from both methodology validate each other. This is called the realism perspective, meaning that in the future, if I want to uh, do more advanced research, I could use my original data and use it as a predictive guide. So I don't really have to 3D print the next generation model. I could just uh, do multiple iterations, iterations, iterations. And when the product is finished, I could 3D print it and test it again. And the second one is that computation will be the future of sustainable research. As I said before, it saved me a lot of time, it saved me a lot of resource. Uh, basically, it is much more sustainable compared to conventional experimental one. And then the third point is that biomimicry is still the most efficient way of designing things. Now remember Mark 3 use, uh, is based from Armadillo. Mark 5, which is currently under development, will uh, use the sharp fins and wheels and I will be using the memory shape alloy as used in NASA's rover, uh, prototype rover, so that I could eliminate the need of actuators, meaning that it will be a weight reduction, and so it will be much lighter, and even I, my aim is to have the similar weight as the conventional winglet, but higher efficiency. And so, moving on to the fourth point is that curiosity and motivations are crucial in research, as basically they are the fuel of research. And the last one, there is no success without failures. Uh, in this experiment, I failed a lot. And it even took me like a whole day just to finish three configurations because sometimes the sensors malfunction, the data accumulator malfunctions, and well. But in the end, we got the, I got the result that I need to have something to conclude on. So that is a success for me. And these are the references that I use for this project. And moving on, I want to talk about the continuity of this project. Remember that in the beginning, uh, one of my teachers told me that I will never win anything. And so I, uh, I went to a new school to get out from my comfort zone. And 
I joined a lot of scientific competitions, scientific research competitions, and I failed a lot of them. Uh, but in the year of 2018, this particular project, the Adaptive Variable Wind Tip, uh, I inserted it into the Indonesian Institute of Sciences uh, Research Competition named El Kayer, and in there I won three awards as listed on the slides. But what comes after this event is actually much more uh, exciting because I was also selected as Indonesian delegates in Intel ISF 2019 in Phoenix, Arizona, USA. In there, I got even more surprised because NASA, Boeing, AIAA, and Collins Aerospace came into my booth and we had a long discussions regarding this project. They gave me a lot of uh, feedbacks, they gave me a lot of insights, they gave me uh, something, a lot of motivations. And they told me that yes, this project has a prospect, but we need uh, you need to improve the research methodology so that it is much more uh, reasonable for them. And so that's what kept me going on uh, until today. And so why do I tell you this? It's not boasting myself. I want to show that a kid who got low score at math uh, is able to get this far. I believe is because of these three things which I want to share with you. And those three things are focus, perseverance, and belief. Now, focus on yourself because, well, you need to aim something in your life and persevere in it because no matter how hard it is, in the end, the effort will be worth it. No matter what the result is, no matter what the end might look like, it will be worth it. And the last thing is that believe in yourself because if you cannot believe in yourself, how will others believe in you? And with that being said, thank you very much for listening to my TED Talks. Have a great day, everyone. Goodbye.